Firing bricks is an unrelenting task. Anant Ram Patel brings new fuel. His boss has recently switched from coal to biomass briquettes. This is no challenge for Anant, who has 15 years of experience on the job. The main thing is to keep the fire burning. I put the briquettes in the hole and I can tell how much heat is being generated. I measure the heat based on my experience over the last 10 to 15 years. These are the outskirts of Roorkee in northern India. The soil here has a high clay content, meaning it's ideal for making bricks. Each worker makes around 1,200 casts a day. These are then fired in the kiln. The area has many brickworks, including one owned by Mohammed Afzal. After 30 years in business, he switched to biomass fuel for one reason, it's cheaper. The main factor is the cost. I have to pay a lot of cash up front for the coal, but not for the briquettes. I pay for them when they're delivered, and they're much easier and cleaner to load and unload. The briquettes are made from pine needles, a sustainable raw material. Nearby pine forests mean the fuel doesn't have to be transported long distances. Here in the foothills of the Himalayas, the climate is mild, perfect for pines. The trees shed their needles once a year, covering the forest floor. The dry needles are extremely flammable and can easily cause forest fires. Brijesh Rawat experienced such a blaze as a child. It was always in the back of mind, like it's a real nuisance. So when we grown up and uh, like my brother, elder brother, he has done his doctorate in combustion. So we, we are, he has done some research and he, we came with the idea that this pine can be briquetted and can be used as very good as a uh, alternate to the fuel of coal and LPG. Almost a year ago, the brothers started their business with official permission to collect the needles. The local authorities were happy the fire hazard was being removed from the forest. The biomass producers began on 10 hectares of land. Next year, they hope to get a permit to cover a much larger area. The needles are collected by local villagers. Work in the area is otherwise scarce. I collect between 50 and 100 kilos, depending on how much pine's on the ground. It will be converted into coal. I have to be careful when I'm collecting the needles because the ground is slippery. I also have to do all my housework. Workers can earn about three euros a day, providing extra income for the villagers. As many needles as possible are collected in April and May, so the biomass production can continue throughout the year. Up till now, it was of no use, and suddenly that people are coming, and they are giving us money to collect this. So they were a bit surprised, so they were a bit reluctant also that uh, if they are not joking or what. The truck's arrival signals the end of the workday. It's been a productive day's work. The next morning, the needles reach Kodwara, a town in the foothills of the mountains and home to some 30,000 people. The needle deliveries arrive at the briquette factory, which is located outside the town. First, the long needles are shredded, making them easier to process. They're then mixed with sawdust before being turned into fuel. Here, yeah, just see the mixing. Mixing of pine is with the sawdust. That is a, uh, th th this is required because 
uh, to get the tight compactness so that the briquettes may hold it better. So that's why this mixing of pine with the sawdust is very much required. The machines work around the clock, spitting out 11 tons of briquettes every day. When they're burned, the briquettes produce emissions. But Brijesh Rawat says, in contrast to coal, they don't increase CO2 levels in the atmosphere. Biomass briquettes are made of renewable source of energy. So whatever the carbon it is absorbing, the same, same amount of carbon it is emitting to the environment. So basically it is balancing the carbon emission. But in case of coal, which is beneath the earth for thousands of years and then it has been extracted out and then we are using that coal, so it is emitting the extra carbon, which is creating the imbalance to the earth. The biomass entrepreneurs have three big clients so far, but they'll need to invest in a second machine to expand their business. Their raw material is free and there's more than enough to keep them supplied. The biomass briquettes provide a positive example of how local resources can be effectively exploited.